Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Oh, finally we get back to these projects. It feels like forever I've been dancing around a Japanese rice bag with all my French fabrics, but that is finished. And yesterday you would have watched the Etsy share from the lace haul that I did. So the wedding, um, the wedding dress company that salvages and on sells all of their couture bits and pieces. That's silkandstitch.com.au. Now, Christine did a little order with them and that caught my eye and I thought I'll give it a go. And I'm really, really pleased with what I got. I sort of got a mix of um, base fabrics that you would make a dress for a wedding out of. The laces, which are adorned to some degree with flowers and bits and pieces. And then a heap of heavily, heavily beaded motifs, which brings me into today's project. And I think I mentioned yesterday that as I was sort of thumbing through them, I, I think I, I needed to add some of them to my piece. Now, this one has had a little bit of that treatment already. I'm a bit of a fan of, you know, all of those little beaded embellishments and sort of taking them out of bigger pieces to use. Now, today's project uh, prompt or this week's prompt uh, well it was actually last week by the time you're seeing this video for me it's only Thursday so the prompt was last night birdhouse which on a lot of my pieces I already have a little birdhouse but I am getting to the point where it's starting to get a bit full so what I thought I'd do is, as Rachel said, if you've already done a birdhouse or a bird bath, it might be something in the way of maintenance where you want to do some back stitching or just add some more bits and pieces that you want for your story. So that is going to apply to this piece. I haven't had a chance to look at the others yet, um, but I think there's a few birdhouses through the whole thing. So what I want to do is have a little look at some of these pieces that I grabbed out and see if I can stitch them on to my work. Because I thought if I'm gonna be a little glamorous on this particular project, this is some morsels that may be able to be used. So I've got just a couple bits. These flowers caught my eye. I thought, oh, I'd have to have to work some of those in. So I've got three of those. I've got just this little piece of fabric that's got little veins over it with glitter. And then there's this, this little flower here caught my eye with the leaf. And then there was this tool that had lots of little flowers on them, little three-dimensional pieces. So I've got that sitting on my desk and I want to look for spots where I can just add some more treasures just to bling her up a little bit. I feel like I could do something there. Yeah, definitely there. It's getting so full. Oh, you can't half tell we're getting to the end of the uh, project. Let me have a little snip here. These are always fun to explore. Have they taken a thread from the line of pearls and diamantes into the flower? And if you can see it, can you snip between it? Yeah, they have. They haven't with the diamantes. That's a terminating end there. But that pearl is definitely going to fall away. But that's okay. We'll just pop the little pearl in my little bucket. Those all came adrift after doing the video. So what I'm going to do, just to preserve that, I'm going to grab my art glitter glue. Just put a little bit of glue around that thread. That'll just protect it from completely unraveling. Now, where did I put my... There it is. I can't see pearls for looking here. I'm 
Okay, so let's just sit you to one side. <clears throat> Alrighty. This little glamour. Now, is it going to hold together? I think so. Yep. Either way, by the time I've finished stitching it down. Oh, yeah. I like that. Transitions that through there, that floral. Looks like it's heading up over this white piece of lace. So let's get a needle and thread and get a few stitches in it. What fun. So how are you all going with your volume four, the next six months? Is your head spinning? I know mine is. Someone asked me, you know, your, your mood boards, what you're doing with your mood boards. And I, I don't know. <clears throat> I have no idea. I'm still trying to get the ideas straight. Oh, it's crazy. The mood boards will happen, but at the moment, I can't really proceed to that until I'm happy with my concepts. Like, how am I going to present the work? I don't want to do another wall hanging because I did a wall hanging with my French garden. I don't want to do a snippet roll. I mean, I wouldn't have enough room to do anything on a snippet roll. <clears throat> I could do something framed, like in a shadow box, and I think you sort of need to consider that heavily because if you're going to add three-dimensional pieces, you, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you would probably need to consider a shadow box to protect them, especially when it comes down to, say, vintage sewing bits and pieces. Yeah, I just had another idea. Um, the box idea that Rachel suggested, you could have a piece of stitching in there with most of your fabric, lace, threads and, you know, your actual handiwork, but then in the box stored with that piece of stitching are some of your treasures. So I saw some photos of mood boards that hit, had a teacup or a plate, you know, really three-dimensional things. So if you had a beautiful chest or a box, I'm talking something a decent size, maybe as big as a shoe box, maybe even bigger, you could then add in their treasures to go with your piece. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you've used, say, a dinner set as your inspiration. Then you could put the dinner set in the box and then have your needlework in with the dinner set. So it's all part of the set. So it'd be another way of presenting your piece. And then if you had um, little booties and things from kids, like I've got... Um, my husband's little little shoes from when he was a little boy and the little red um, leather shoes are cute as cute and I've got a little pink pair in there that I used to wear when I was a little girl. Now I can't stitch them onto a piece but they sort of would be part of probably a memory there could be a prompt of that nature. So having it stored in a treasure box it's probably not a bad idea. Then you can really pull together a collection and your needlework is part of that collection. And who's to say your needlework isn't broken down into two or three pieces within the collection. Now I've really done it. I've got that thread cord under that diamante. Yeah, your um, needlework is part of the collection. So you might do two or three pieces, especially if you want to drift between colors and one piece doesn't suit all those colors. Yeah, you see, you might go, here's, here's another idea. 
you might drift from the 70s into the 60s into the 50s now if you've got fabrics from all of those different times excuse me <clears throat> you won't um you'll find it quite difficult to pair them all together so you could do you could do a, a piece for each decade and then within that piece could be dedicated to someone in particular there's another idea oh my goodness this one is a real open open book I know a lot of you I can see in your comments as you're um, posting your mood boards you're trying to get your head around how these prompts will work don't worry about them something will come of it and you can guarantee that there is nothing you'll be able to think of now that will even come close to where you probably will end up and I think you probably have realized that with down the garden path because we didn't know the prompts we were sort of following blindly and then as soon as we heard the prompts we could apply them somehow we have to have faith that the girls see the big picture they will know what our projects will look like in six months time I can guarantee it so don't stress over the prompts don't even worry about them don't think about them they're irrelevant because you will enjoy the adventure once you know the prompt does that make sense we have to just trust the, the girls and their mum Judy know where we're heading I can guarantee they know where we're heading and at the end of the day if you don't have something that matches those prompts you can revisit a prompt from a previous week you can just adorn your piece with some stitching explore a, a picture or a pattern or a stitch there's no set guidelines like that you know what I mean and within reason of course you, they don't want you to go off and start stitching a heap of parrots on a piece when the prompt might have been a photo of a loved one not that I think it, it would be a photo of a loved one I think unless you oh, I don't know I don't know who knows who cares doesn't matter the first thing is to work out how are you going to present your work is it going to be a big square or a rectangle of fabric and everything stitched onto it is it going to be presented then in a frame is it just a panel how are you going to present it and that's where I'm twirling around I know honey bear look if you haven't watched my video last week it'll be in the um, links below if you need to catch up but you'll find it it's it's there I know honey bears are definite for those of you who got really excited about honey bear honey bears are definite she is a beloved teddy of mine that could do with a makeover so we're going to create some clothing for honey bear and then stitch memories onto honey bear according to the prompts so honey bear will be an absolute hoot to do i haven't made dolls clothing since i was a little girl and that in itself is a memory oh my goodness grandma would make clothing for us because she'd come and visit the farm granddad would be down the paddock with dad servicing pumps and going through all of his tools and oiling them all up and the windmill would get a bit of a service the tractor would get a service this is when grandma and granddad were retired from their own farm and grandma would be with me and mum in the house doing something it'd be crocheting or making clothes and of course if there were clothes to be made for mum and I there'd be scraps so out would come honey bear and I had another doll I don't know where she's got to she wasn't the, the cutest thing I wasn't really into dolls to be honest I wasn't very gentle with my dolls I was a bit of a tomboy so the dollies usually ended up under the house with all of the boy toys and in the dirt now you're thinking okay there's a snapshot into Corinne yeah, I was a bit of a tomboy I'd rather be out playing with the animals on the farm than a doll. But Honey Bear, she was my only teddy. She was on my bed. She never went outside. 
No way, Jose. Don't know where I could add that. I think I need a couple more little bits with that little girl there. I really like the look of these little things. So let's, let's do a rough cut around. And get these out. Some of these will work on my champagne garden piece too. So I might just get them all out. And then I'm going to see if I can work a few into the piece. It'll help build up the flowers in my garden. I'm thinking, thinking about volume three, four. The lace book's definitely happening. I have wanted to do a salute to my grandmother's wedding industry sewing career for so long. And I've got, um, I've got a piece of lace in a little tin that came from my mum's wedding dress. Now she had a very plain, straight line dress, but over the top of it was a coat, like a jacket of lace that went to the ground, very straight lines. I've got some of that lace and it it's so beautiful. It's not glamorous as in sparkly. It's um, just, it's sort of like this, just stitched um, one color. I think you would have called it a matinee jacket in the day, or is that what you call jackets for babies that are crocheted? A light, lightweight jacket to wear in the early evening. It's that type of thing and it's beautiful. And I found a little piece of it in the sewing room. So that needs a home. I've got some pieces of my cousin's wedding dress. Now, oh, Teresa, if you're listening, I need to do something for you because your mum was cleaning out her cupboards and she gave me a box of bits and pieces of fabric and in there was some satin, some tulle and some lace to do with your wedding dress. And I said to your mum at the time, this really should go to Teresa. And she did say that you had some of your morsels and they were her pile of morsels from the project because grandma um, made my cousin's dress as well. We were the last of the girls to get a dress, myself and Teresa. The rest of the grandkids were either boys or too little. By the time Grandma um, saw their weddings, she was well and truly retired from that style of work. So Teresa and I were the, the only two grandkids that got a dress made out of Grandma's goodies. So as I was going to say, Teresa, I wanted to make you something as a memory to do with grandma and your dress and your lace and so maybe I can work that into our project as well because that's just been on the back burner for so long I've had all of those snippets for probably 12 months maybe 18 months when your mum cleaned out her cupboards so Teresa's mum and my mum are sisters so Teresa and I are first cousins if you hadn't figured that out already of course you have now, her daughter is Madison, who went to the UK to continue her ambulance officer career. You would have heard my Maddie stories. So, I think volume four, have we got them all? There they are. Excellent. So, I'll put that fabric back there. So, volume four the wedding theme and grandma's sewing room. I think there'll be a side project come of it where we create, we create a um, 
something for Teresa as well, using her wedding dress bits and pieces. That'd be fun. Don't know what, but we'll think of something. Okay, so needle and thread is ready. What have we got here? Oh, this little guy. Let's get him out. Yep. Now that's going to be probably a problem. But that's okay. We might snip high. See what falls off. Oh, gee, I tell you, I just love this stuff. There's a hard wire there, is there? How did they make this? Oh, yeah, we got it. Now, are you going to fall apart on me? I don't think so. You're looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Okay, that's okay. Lovely. All right, let's 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 see where we can put some more morsels. Oh. oh, boy, oh, boy. Just love it. It's going to be so nice to have some of these pretty little pieces. Oh, I don't have much room, but do I? Goodness me. I'll probably get some of these little guys in, in there. Where's a pin? He will work because there's nothing really in there. So we can get that little flower onto there. Let's get this little guy into here. Let me zoom in. You guys won't be seeing all the goodness that I'm seeing here. So there's a, a doily here, the little squirrel and some beading. So let's tuck that little piece there. I feel like there could be a little guy up there as well. Like I was pretty happy with the way the flowers came together that I did in this zone. But this is just adding, oh, the next layer. Yep, like that. Let's have a look at pumpkin here. I think we could, we could jazzy up our pumpkin. Oh, the memories. Oh. And I'll just have that tulle coming up and over the pumpkin beading there, just so it sort of softens that edge of the pumpkin. Oh, you've just got to love snippet rolls. They are so much fun. Oh, imagine a snippet roll <clears throat> with all of the motifs on it. What a beautiful... You could roll it out and there's my crinoline lady. We can't crowd her in and my pots. I've got this big flower here. I feel like we could do something down in this area. Yeah, that's, I like that there. Oh, I love those sequins. I don't do a lot of heavy sequin work. I haven't yet had a project to do it. But um, I've got this owl. Oh, I don't know what to do with this owl. If you've watched my video, you would have seen me uh, show you the owl that's printed onto the piece of fabric. That owl has been burning a hole. 
I'm going to put that there. Has been burning a hole in my cupboard. Um, if you remember me doing Percy the Peacock, he was all layers and textures of um, different elements. That is what I'm thinking for the owl. The only thing that is holding me back is the owl is printed with a blue ink. So anything I do on it has to either cover the outline completely, hence why it's for cruel work. So you would be stitching over it and you'd never see the blue ink. But I tend to do a mix of cruel work, um, collaging, textures, you know, it's very much layers upon layers of, of um, pieces. So there is a high likelihood then that the blue print will be seen. And of course, I can't just wash it out because by the time I'm finished, Bobby Dazzle and everything, there's, it just can't be washed. So therefore, the project has to be a blue toned project, which is not a problem. I don't have a lot of blues in the way of, I'm sort of thinking French blues. But I am hanging on Susanna getting back from her trip because she's now well and truly back from the UK, plus she was with me in France. So I've said to her when she gets her packs of fabrics together, ready to sell, I'd be keen to have a little look for the blue tones, the French blues. because it might help me pull that owl piece together. It's no rush, like the owl will happen. I've had that panel for over a year now, so a little bit longer won't matter. And it may take me time to gather what I need for the piece. So, yeah, that's the owl. If you're wondering what's gonna happen with the owl, like, look at that. Can I find a home for that? Let's snip it off. This piece is getting very glamorous, which is just brilliant. Where are we going to put you? Do we break that down even more? We have this leaf. Uh, let's just have one more look. So we've got little pins everywhere with little flowers. So I'll stitch them on. They'll be my homework. Do we put it above crinoline lady? I do like that. Looks like it's coming off the air. Yeah, I like that, that top edge. Okay. See what I mean by these motifs? You break them down into little elements and then build from there. That is so much fun. Now I don't want to cover the gold work there. I'm trying to get a pin. Hmm. So I've got this, this trim now. This is good for ground covers. Like we've been stitching little beads and pearls and bits and pieces in. So there's, it's not like there's not something somewhere, but do I have some ground that could do with a bit of sparkle? Not really, maybe there. Yeah, 
Oh, you can't even see. I'm so sorry, guys. There you go. Like, I just, I'm not convinced. I sort of feel like my ground is not an issue. What about the sky? Should I? Well, that's not bad. That puts a little bit of bobby dazzle up there, doesn't it? Mm, I like that. Now, what's the bets? When I cut this, this is going to just unravel. How have they done that? Have they got one continuous line under all those little seed beads? Or have they stitched? You know where you do two, stitch down, repeat the stitch before you move forward? We are about to find out. I'm going to stitch that across the top there it'll stop at that crochet edge so it'll look like it's an edge on the crocheting and i'm going to snip it and see what happens who's going to bet they all fall apart see there seems to be two that are tightly stitched together i'm going to take a punt that's fallen off that one hasn't. Okay. There's a bead. Save him. Save him. I'm going to take a punt that they have every two beads secured them down. Yeah, see, that's not falling off. That one did. That one didn't. All right. Lovely. So you can't have it falling apart. If you were a wedding dressmaker, you'd want to know with confidence that you could cut into... Gosh, Grandma would never have used glue like I am. Oh, she would be like, what's she say? Hmm. That's all she'd say. Hmm. That would be her processing what she was seeing. <laughs> My mum and I would look at each other and go, okay, change of plans. We're not going to be proceeding with this idea. And do we put the fine line of beads, yeah, down. That sort of feels like it's a little bit safer for them. Oh, love it, love it. This piece has become so glamorous. How do we pin this? Pin it down. Like that. This pe this little one um, wave of colour hasn't had a lot of love because French Gardener is just getting all the attention. So it'll be lovely to spend a bit of time adding to this one. I could do with some more seed stitch around the place but then you look at it and you go well having that planer piece there and there but seed stitch all through here is probably enough i feel better knowing that i'm getting some more little elements onto it okay should hold everything and won't go flying. And I can come through there and stitch all that to make it secure. Lovely. Okay, I think that's all of me, me bits. Is there anything on here we could... It's a big piece. I'd have to cut it down. And it looks pretty intricate. I think that's probably it. I think we've got enough bling. Yeah, all right. Okay, where are we going to start? Let's start at the end. Let 
the needle and thread happening. And let's get this little guy. How are we going for time? Oh, we got plenty of time. Lovely. So I'm just going to do some little tacking stitches around these little pieces to hold them in to position. Wonder what the next prompt's going to be. Any suggestions? I'm sort of thinking it's going to be something quite sizable because when you have a look at Rachel's piece, she's tucked her birdhouse within her flowers. So that's a finish. And I think, I don't know, I think the last, the last piece will be across the bottom. It's the end of the garden. So what would be at the bottom of the garden that we haven't already done? I guess on Rachel's piece, a gate would be at the end of the garden. You'd close the gate as you're leaving the garden. I don't know. What else could be down the end of the garden? A compost heap? <laughs> Gosh, could you imagine? That won't be the compost heap. I'm blank. I've got nothing. If you're thinking something, write it in the comments because I'd love to see. See, I'm, I'm in two minds of what to do with my French garden because I have a space left that's the size of a dinner plate. Um, say an oblong dinner plate. So and I now know the birdhouse scenario. I have a feeling they're already on there. They mightn't be. I might be thinking of the doily one. The splash of colour the um, with all of the old doilies and embroidery pieces. So uh, that I know has got birdhouses. Oh gosh, it's been so long since I've looked at them because I've been away. And working on rice bags and postcard journals. So I'm a sort of, I'm in two minds. I'm so close to the finish line that I hold for the next prompt in order to bring them together, those two pieces in particular. Having said that, the, the piece that is all of the doilies, splash of colour, is nearly at the end it, I'm sort of at the top of the panel so I could probably start putting the finishing pieces across the top which will be very floral orientated because I don't want to go any taller so the prompt might be able to be worked into that process of finishing the piece now the bird house I'm positive. Yeah, I did. I did a birdhouse on that one, right in the middle. I'm just stitching through some of these sequins. I think that'll really help anchor that little motif. Yeah, the birdhouse is on that piece. So I'm definitely on the final stages of that one. So do I start piecing in the, the, the top of the panel, the finish, which will be very floral, or do I wait for the last prompt in case it would be a fantastic top to the piece? It's tricky, isn't it? We'll see. I'll have to have a think about it. I'll pull the piece out, have a good look at it. Even if we just pin the top of the piece and then as soon as we know what the final prompt is, I could then adjust if needed or add in that particular prompt. I don't know. Now, as for my French garden, did I put did I put a birdhouse in that? Now I have a birdhouse image or a design in the little book that I printed years and years ago. So if I haven't already included a birdhouse in the French garden, that will definitely be involved because it's been lovely to capture some of the memories of making that book. 
it'll be the first thing I look at as soon as I get off the camera here is I'll dig out those two big panels and see where we're at and then I'll decide I think as for champagne garden I have a tiny little space champagne garden is sitting here I have a tiny tiny little space left to do something once again do I use it for this prompt or see this prompt of birdhouse would be perfect for that space the space is probably the size of this cotton reel and it's a very lineal space so I, I think there will be a birdhouse prompt used on that one so that will be fun and it'll be probably similar styling to um, Rachel's where I just embroider it in because that piece is pretty much all of the prompts have been just embroidered in so I think that one will be uh, pretty straightforward I might actually do that in the next video let's let's get the both of the snippet rolls sorted so tomorrow you will see champagne garden and we will insert a birdhouse unless of course there's already a birdhouse like I said I've been away and when I've come back I've been working on the postcard wrap and the rice bag so it feels like forever since I've picked up these pieces So it'd be good to get back in amongst them, which will bring us nicely up into the 1st of July, ready to start our next adventure. For those of you out there who haven't had a go at any of the projects yet, please have a go at this next one. I think you're going to find you'll thoroughly enjoy it because it's going to be very free form. You can do as little as much stitching as you like. It's going to be gathering treasures and stitching them down or adding them to something in the way of a box or a, a frame. You may not be able to get a stitch into something, so you might need to have a think about that in the way that you present your piece. It's going to be so good. Because our sewing rooms, <laughs> our sewing rooms are full of treasures. Let's be honest. So whatever your treasure may be, it needs to come out and be used. Because like I always say, if we don't use our treasures, if I don't cut this lace up that I got yesterday and use it, it will end up in a thrift store and someone like me is going to come trundling in there and think she's found Christmas. And meanwhile, I've had it in a cupboard looking at it going, oh, it's so pretty. I don't want to cut it up. I'm hoarding it. Well, no, nah, no more. We've got to use it, guys. And even these treasures that belong to someone in our family or, um, you know, especially like I was saying about my mum's lace from her wedding dress, it's sitting in a tin. And the tin has just been pushed and pushed and pushed back and back and is now under a shelf. It's on the carpet under a shelf with about four other tins with who knows what in them. Enough. It's got to come out and it's got to be used. Okay, I have made it full circle. I might just scoot down the center of this motif. I feel like I could do with some more stitches in the center. Imagine having a go at beading that. Like it wouldn't be that hard. When you break it down, you'd need to find yourself a really nice rhinestone See, we might have a go at that in that lace book. We'll be able to play with stuff like that because we're right in amongst it. We reproduce. We get a rhinestone that put little, 
little, um, what are the beads that are rectangles? There's a name for them, can't think of it. They've got lines of them coming out to create. This is Sonia. Are you watching Sonia from um, her channel? She does a lot of beading. Do you reckon you could reproduce that, Sonia? I think you could. Let me bring it right up to the camera. So there's veins coming out and then they've interfilled the spaces. There's all little sequins in there, Sonia. I know she's probably thinking, oh my goodness, that girl. Remember we challenged her to the pumpkin? They put little clear sequins right through. Once they got the segments stitched down, they've backfilled it with sequins. They're tiny, but if anyone's going to have them in a stash, Sonia will, her craft room. And then they beaded around the perimeter, but made it real wriggly to build in the petal edge. So when you look at what they've done, it's quite good, quite simple. So we might do a little bit of that type of work. I know I want to recreate in the lace book some crocheted edges. Now I'm forever cutting them off um, thrift store finds, you know, when they crochet the edge around a doily. Well, I've got the pattern books and grandma used to do that and I'm too lazy to do that. So I've been chopping them off any that I find in all of the thrift stores and I use them, use them all the time. Well, I thought as part of the project, let's get the crochet hook out and learn something new. It could be a disaster because, you know, crocheting with fine thread, doing those fine, delicate patterns can be not easy. And I wouldn't say my eyesight's really good for that type of work, but you know, I can thread a needle, so maybe I'm just making excuses. I'd say I am. I know my mate Mary Ann is really starting to play with crocheting now. She's making little booties, and you know, she's really quite comfortable reading a pattern. So if I find that it is beyond painful for me, I could commission Mary Ann to make some um, crocheted borders for our book. She did the snowflakes for me when I was doing the Christmas one. She made a heap of crocheted snowflakes and I've got some of them hanging on my Christmas tree and some of them I worked into my Journal of Stitchery, the Christmas project. And that was really nice to have her work as part of my work so maybe we can convince her to do some borders but we will give it a go i need to give it a go so i'm just working along my piece stitching down all these little cuties Gosh, where did the time go, guys? There we go. Won't take long to stitch these down now. But I won't bore you through it. We'll let you go. We've got 10 minutes, so we'll get a few stitched. So who has already got a birdhouse on their piece? And what are you going to do instead of a birdhouse? Have you got some maintenance stitching to do or some background stitching? What are you up to this particular prompt? Okay, that's another one done. Let's scoot along. Oh, look, at, doesn't it make a difference, that little bit of shimmer? Okay, this little guy next. Oh, 
pulled my thread right through. There we go. It won't take much to secure these little guys. And that's this one done. Oh, I love it. It's just put the little bit of glamour on the piece that it needed. Thank you, Christine, for showing me that video from that wedding dress wholesale supplier creator to style a business. Couture scraps, that's right up our alley, couture scraps. Okay, so that's that one done. Get rid of that big pin. Okay. Next one. This little guy here it's really good it's having that little bit of tool around each piece is softening the background behind it which I'm really liking it's sort of adding more layers as the girls would say it's adding more texture Textual. It's very textual. That's shocking pronunciation. I would never have made a very good English teacher. I'd be, my grammar is not good. Oh, my husband was on Ancestry.com last night. We did the tests probably five years ago. Mum, myself and my husband and we did the swab we really wanted grandma to do it but she wouldn't have it she was adopted we know very very little about her history but we figured that if mum did it we'd get a bit of a snapshot of where where she may have come from because we do know that on both sides of my mum's family her aunts and uncles and her dad um, have German, um, Prussian, Russia, all those sorts of areas because a lot of the family came out of those areas and settled in Australia. So we were expecting all of that. And what we got was a lot of English. Turned out that there was 36% English in my mum, which was a complete surprise. But Having said that, we did know that when Grandma was adopted, she came to my great-grandparents from a Methodist church. Was it Methodist or Anglican? Oh, goodness me, my memory. Anyway, she's come from a church that we felt had a very English background, the people within the church. We sort of know the town and we know the church. So we've always suspected that there was an English uh, influence and there is, there is. So there is a lot of English blood in me as well, which is funny because my husband is English and when he did his DNA, he has got more Scottish blood in him than English. I have just as much English in me. Isn't that hilarious? So he's always teased me. I, I'm English, you know, uh, he is, he's English and I'm from the UK, the motherland, you know, and you were a, a German immigrant families, you know, all from the Prussia, Russia, Germany, I'm English from the motherland, like he'd always, you know, tease me about it all. Not that there was anything wrong with any of it, but he was ever so proud. 
And then when his DNA came back, he was actually Scottish more so than English. It was pretty funny. And that I was English due to my grandmother's adoption. Yes, it was pretty funny. So we haven't looked at those results for ages. And on email, we would get an email every day where another cousin has joined my husband's family tree. Not so much mine because we really don't have a lot of history of them prior to coming to Australia. So the history of my family on my dad's side is quite small because they're settlers of Queensland or Adelaide region. Anyway, being that they're all English on my other side, on my dad, sorry, on my husband's side, and Scottish, and not many have immigrated, their tree is huge, thousands and thousands up and above and below. The tree's massive. So he clicked on one of the emails that had popped in that regularly drop in to say another fourth cousin, fifth cousin, sixth cousin has landed on the tree. He had a, a quiet moment and clicked on it and went to, into Ancestry.com where our da details are sitting and had a little look around and oh, it was huge. It was really interesting. He, had a, he thoroughly enjoyed it. So he doesn't know a lot about his family, his mum and dad's immediate family. He doesn't know a lot because they came to Australia and left England behind. So he was reading names out and he's like oh that's my father's middle name there's my mum's maiden name like yeah it was very interesting and he thoroughly enjoyed it he was there he was in amongst it for hours I then clicked on mine I was doing needlework so I was a bit preoccupied but I thought that's enough I'll put it down so I clicked on mine accessed it again hadn't been in there for years and I actually went in and saw that my mum's details still were there as living. So I went in and edited that to say that she'd now deceased. So the tree is more current, I guess, for want of a better description. And there was one photo there of a possible maternal mother for my grandmother and I was like, ooh, here we go. This could be something to do with the adoption. So someone had uploaded an image of a lady at a wedding of her sister. So there was a name and I, th I thought, oh, is this the adopted family? But no, it wasn't. It was my great grandmother so obviously someone's done the family tree and knew that that lady was the mum to my grandmother, not the, the natural mum, the adopted mum. And they put that photo in there and just popped her name in there. So that was a nice surprise. I couldn't really tell who was who in the photo because there was about six women standing at a garden wedding and this, this lady was in amongst it. And I'm really not sure which one it was, but obviously they are great, great aunts and great, great grandmother. But the adopted family, not the actual family. So no mystery solved, but it was interesting. But that's about it. There was nothing else in there. So I closed it down and off I went picked up my needle and thread and began stitching again. It's very interesting, all that stuff. I'm not um, smart enough to spend time researching it all and gathering the data and entering it all, you know, that genealogy and it's a um, little bit above my pay grade. I've got a few family friends uh, that have been doing it for their families, both sides, and they've uncovered all sorts of interesting, interesting tales, scandals. Uh, 
Okay. I just noticed that we've just hit the hour and I'm running out of thread. So I'm going to finish off that thread and I'm going to leave you alone as you go and start your day, finish your day, stitch your day away. But I'm going to finish it while I sit here. I'm going to turn the camera off because we've hit the hour, but I'm going to sit here and stitch this and then it's done and I'll pop a few photos at the end but you probably won't really be able to tell what you're looking at because it's such a, a thick so I've got a couple more to stitch one there finish that stitch those two little pieces little pumpkin that guy and the piece along there and there. Oh, there's a little bit, so that'll keep me busy. All right. Okay, guys, have a lovely day, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.